Ladies and gentlemen, we present for your entertainment the penthouse murder mystery. The curtain will swing back from a gigantic stage bound only by the limits of your own imagination. Turn out the lights in your living rooms out there, and as you hear the voices of this wonderful cast of Hollywood talking picture stars come from the atmosphere, Jimmy Reagan will unfold for you a drama of the underworld that will carry you up and away into another existence in which the other half of humanity lives and breathes. Slowly, majestically, the curtain swings back and we are on the roof of a skyscraper, looking out over the millions of twinkling lights in the city below. High above the dust and roar of its streetcars, elevated railways, and honking auto traffic, yes, we are standing on the roof of a modern skyscraper, but it does not seem like a roof. Why, there stands a beautiful home, surrounded by a beautiful lawn, smooth as velvet, with shrubbery growing, even small trees are planted here. Ah, some millionaire has secluded himself among the clouds on the roof of this modern tribute to the combination of engineering skill and money. Much money. Ah, how lights in the house and the shadows of many people thrown against the blinds as they move about the room inside. A strain of music filters through to us as we stand here on the lawn. Ah, someone throws open the French window. A beautifully gowned woman gazes into the night for a moment and is gone. Good. Now we can see the entire interior of the room. It is the dining room. Everyone is taking their places at the long table. What a jolly, happy gathering it is and what a gloriously beautiful picture. The brilliantly colored evening gowns of the young ladies Contrasting against the somber black and white are the evening clothes of the men. Let us draw closer, and perhaps we can overhear what that jolly group of young folks standing just inside the window are saying. Oh, oh what was that explosion? Was that a gun? Oh, no, Billy. Just one of your beastly American autos backfiring down in the street. Oh, dear. Oh, come, oh. don't be nervous, dear. But, Philip, hmm? tell me, why have you done this thing? I'm quite stumped, you know. <laughs> oh, now, Gerald, let's not talk about it, huh? But, Philip, right out of a blue sky, you call us here and announce your engagement to this blooming chap, Roland Eubank. Uh-huh. Why? Well, I thought that that was all settled about you and no, me. No, 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 Gerald. Now, don't bring that up again, please. I love Roland. I don't know, he's so different from the rest of you somehow. <laughs> different? Yes. Yes, quite so, quite so. I should say he is yeah, different. Yeah, he is. Well, you know he's nothing but an electrical engineer. Oh, a uh, uh, tradesman, so to speak. Well? And this job that he has just completed for your father is his first contract. Well, I know that. He isn't even established in the commercial world, you know, to say nothing of his family background. And you, one of the New England Morley. Stop it, Gerald, stop it. What do I care if half the crew in the Mayflower were my ancestors? That has nothing to do with my loving Roland Eubank. Well then, Phyllis, perhaps this little statement will have something to do with your loving him. What do you mean? Are you aware that his father was the gangster who was taken to the country by his own companion five years ago? Oh. And his blooming carcass left to rot in the ditch alongside the Pelham Bay Drive? <laughs> yes, it's a very nasty story. But it will make a much nastier story than the reporters of the tabloid Newspapers get it. It will read something like this. Miss Phyllis Morley, popular young debutante of Boston society, marries the son of New York's late king of the underworld, Al Eubank, more notoriously known to the newspapers and to the public as the Fox. <laughs> oh, you're just a fool and you're a stupid prig, Gerald Norton. Oh, yes, I yes. can't pay attention to what you say. I don't care. I... Well, listen, that sounded as if they stopped in the street below. Oh, I see. Perhaps that was a pistol shot you heard. Oh, dear. Probably the jolly police are down in the street now, gathering up the blooming remains of another gangster. But on the spot, so to speak. Oh, you stop it, Gerald. <laughs> stop it, I tell you. I tell you, I shan't listen to you insulting, priggish, babbling any longer. Now you just get out of here. Oh, come. You go come home. On. You've already ruined my evening. Oh, but Phyllis, I couldn't help it. I can't help it, dear. I love oh, you. Oh, love me. The idea. Oh, no, I tell you. What's the name of the law? Oh, the law. Oh, that's the police. 
Open the door, I tell you. Come on, Kelly. Open that door. All right, boys. All right. In with you. All right, Jelly. You stand over by the French windows. And don't you let anybody out of here. Do you understand? Okay, sir. Okay, sir. And Murphy, you stand by the door. Thank All right? You. Good. Now, some of you speak up and tell me where the murdered man is. Where's the body? What do you mean, where's the body? What body? What are you talking about, officer? What do you mean by bursting in here? This is a private reception. You can't burst in here like this. Oh, I can, can I? Well, I did. You lay off that funny business me fine buckle? Who the devil are you anyway? What's your name? My name is Rollins Eubank. This young lady is my fiance, Miss Phyllis Morley. Oh, yes. This group of young folks you see here in the room our guests set a little reception to announce that Miss Morley has consented to be my wife. Now get out! Now just a moment, young man, just a moment. Who phoned for the cops? That's what I'd like to know. Somebody phoned that there'd been a murder committed here. Murder? The idea. Sure, I guess I ought to know. I took the call myself. And whoever it was said over the phone that it was Richard Morley that had been murdered. Richard Morley murdered? That's right, Miss. Why, that's my father. Oh, dear. My father's here at the reception with us. Father, will you come and talk to the sergeant? He said, I... What's the matter, miss? What's happened? Well, where is my father? Why, he was here just a moment ago. He was here in this very room. Well, where could he have gone? Well, whoever phoned said that the body would be found in the study, miss. Quick, open that door, somebody. <laughs> Oh, oh, father! Father, please come in! Now, wait, 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 all right, stand back, don't get excited. None of you try to leave this room. Do you hear me? Don't jab around that door. Do you hear what I say to you? Murphy, come here quick. Get in there with the girl. Jerry and I will take care of the crowd out here. Okay, sir. Well, who the devil turned out those lights? What the devil kind of a game is this? Turn on the lights, I tell you. Stand by! Stand still, every one of you. If you don't, I'll shoot. Quiet, I tell you. Murphy. Jerry, find that switch. Turn on the lights. Who the devil did that? Well, that's better now that I can see you. Stand just where you are and don't move. Not a single one of you. Do you hear? Now, who was close to the switch when the lights went out, Jerry? No one, sir. I was standing by it myself, sir. And I didn't turn them out, nor I didn't turn them on again either, sir. What's that? You mean to say they went out and went on by themselves? Yes, sir. They must have, sir, or else they are controlled by some other switch besides this one, all sir. All right, all right. We'll see about that later. Now, go in and send the girl out here, and you stay in the study with the body, Murphy. Yes, sir. Okay, Sergeant. Miss Morley, the Sergeant wants you in the other room just a moment, please. Miss Morley. Miss Morley. Miss Morley. The girl is gone, sir. She's not in there, sir. What's that? The girl is gone? Yes, sir. And Mr. Morley's body is gone, too, sir. The devil, the, the body, body is, is gone? gone. The body is that gone. you said, officer? Miss Morley is gone. She's not in there. She disappeared. Let loose of me. All right. Out of my way, I tell you. Hey, 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 young man, hold on there. Hold on. Quiet. Stand back, I tell you. This is the affair for the police now. The law is in charge here. Who the devil turned on the lights again? Who's fooling with those lights? Hey, back with you. Back, I say. Back, all of you. Stand by the wall and don't let anyone near the switch, Murphy. Do what the sergeant says, Shh. What's that noise in there? Quick, Jerry. Get in the study. Shoot to kill. Right, sir. Someone has shut. Someone has shut the door, sir. It's locked, sir. I can't get. Bust it down, I tell you. I can't get it. Shoot off the lock. Oh, All right. I didn't get it yet, Sergeant. Stand back and give me a chance at it. All right. Had a boy, Sergeant. Now we got it. I've got it. Easy, take it easy, Murphy. Before going in there, reload your gun. <laughs> <laughs> Friends of Radio Land, we are sorry, but our few minutes on the air with you tonight is almost finished. The time has passed, as time has a habit of doing. But if you will return with us at the broadcasting of episode two, Perhaps we may learn where that maniacal laughter came from and what it meant. But before we leave you, I'd like to have you hear a few words from an old friend of yours who needs no introduction to any motion picture fan. One of the famous three inch brothers. The eldest hey, brother hey, in fact. Hey, all right, wait John. a minute, Jimmy. All please. right, John, all right. <laughs> you speak for yourself. Thank you, Jimmy, for the opportunity to talk about myself. But I'd rather talk about our lovely little leading lady whose voice has charmed millions for years. On the Collier Hour, 
and other national broadcasting programs and whom you've seen on the screen and on Broadway in White Cargo, This Thing Called Love, and many other New York successes. Miss Isabel Dawn. We all love Miss Isabel up here. Oh, that's awfully sweet of you, Mr. Rin, to say that about me, but, well, speaking of love, <laughs> well, I'd like for them all to meet my, my big moment. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's just my air love, my fiancé. Oh, but he's only my microphone fiancé, you see. And he's really so charming. He's a young man who is one of Hollywood's best-looking picture stars. And believe me, that's the truth. His last name is internationally known. And his first name, <laughs> well, he certainly rushed me into this affair. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Isabel, I thought you were a lady in distress instead of a comedian. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Rush Hugh, Rollins Eubank to you. And I'm going to return good for evil and have you meet my rival up here in the penthouse, Hal Radis, Gerald Norton in the play. You will soon see and hear, Hal, in your own theater, in new talking picture successes. Thank you, Rush. You're a very gracious rival. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to introduce our director, Jimmy Reagan, the man who is responsible for all the dirty work at the crossroads, the man whose pen thrills you and chills you and leaves you up in the air. We're all up in the air here in the penthouse, and it's Jimmy Reagan's fault. We've all worked for many directors, but never, I believe, for one that we liked and admired quite as much as our own Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy, come on over here and step out of that green light and meet your public. Thanks, Al. Friends, I hope you like the cast and the production so well that you will write or telephone the radio station, because, after all, that is the only kind of applause they get and that we get. And an artist's spirits rise and fall with the volume of the applause. And so, until episode two, we bid you. Of Wiedersehen. Miss Puff. Hasta luego. <laughs> oh, good night. Oh, there it is again. <laughs> <laughs>